So now we are going to discuss the drafting system of a roving frame. The elements of a drafting system or drafting unit. A diagram is shown on the right hand side and you see there are so many parts which are there. The main components of the drafting unit are number one drafting rollers, then comes aprons, then come nose bar, cradle, condensers, spacer and a weighting system or weighting mechanism. There is a frame on which the rollers are mounted and we have two set of rollers, bottom rollers and top rollers. We are all familiar with the you know, drafting system since we have already gone through the draw frame course. So other than the drafting rollers, we have some other parts which are not there in the drafting unit of a draw frame. Like aprons are not there in the drafting unit of draw frame, nose bar, cradle, condenser, spacers. These are something which is, which does not exist in the case of draw frame drafting unit. There it is very simple, only few pair of rollers, but here rollers are there. In addition to that, we have apron, nose bar, kettle, condenser, spacer. Weighting mechanism or system is also common, it is here, it is as well as it would be there in the case of draw frame drafting unit also, because the rollers have to be compressed against each other. Then only the drive from the bottom rollers will be transmitted to the fibers. Otherwise, the motion from the bottom rollers cannot be transmitted to the fibers because ultimately we have to move the fibers and because of their movement we have to drive them and that is why we need rollers to drive them. So you can also see that the drafting unit is a little bit inclined as shown in the diagram. So we will learn about them why they are a little bit inclined, there is reason why it is inclined. Now let us look at this elements one after the other. So in this slide, we are showing you the cross-sectional view of a drafting, simple drafting unit where we have three pair of rollers and it is known as 3 over 3 arrangement. Like we have a back pair of rollers, then there is middle pair of rollers and then there is a front pair of rollers. So when you have three pair of rollers, then how many drafting zones we have? We have two drafting zones, so three pair of rollers and two drafting zones. Now the bottom rollers are fluted, we will learn about them in more details. They are fluted and they are made of steel. Why they are fluted? We will see them, we will understand. The top rollers are covered by synthetic rubber. So there is a core part on which a synthetic rubber exists on the top rollers. The draft limit varies between 20 to 22 maximum and minimum could be 5 to 6. That means we can go from 5 to 22 in a way. In this range we can keep the draft, but usually very high drafts are normally not kept. Generally, we keep a draft around 10. If you see the cross sectional view, we can see many other parts like condensers are shown. This is the entry of sliver. This is the entry of sliver and it passes through a condenser. In this zone, there is some amount of stretch, it gets stretched it passes through another condenser and then it enters the nape of the middle 
pair of rollers. The middle pair of rollers, if you see, it is a apron runs over them. There is a bottom apron shown by the orange color and there is a top apron shown by the red color. These aprons actually helps in guiding the fibers in the main drafting zone. So, this is back drafting zone and this is front drafting zone. We will also discuss about them in more details, but the purpose of the apron is to guide these fibers. Now, guide guiding means what? Guiding basically means to make sure that the fibers which are in between them keeps on moving at the speed of middle roller. That is what is guidance. They should not move in a erratic fashion. As long as they are gripped or they are in between the top and bottom aprons, these fibers will continue to move at the speed of aprons only. That is what is guidance. And then they pass through a little condenser sometimes, which is shown here, and they enter the nape of the front pair of rollers. And front pair of rollers runs at a faster speed than the uprons, and hence there is a draft. And this draft leads to stretching of the fiber. So there is some stretch at the back and some stretch in the front. That is what the job of the drafting unit is. Now we will go into more details about them. About the high draft and low draft, the consequences are in the case of high draft, if we keep, there is a chance of high drafting is regularity. So, how much draft we should, here the draft means total draft, how much draft we should keep in this machine depends upon what type of fibers I am processing, what are the sort fiber percentage in that and what is the quality of the roving or the yarn that I expect. If my expectations are high, that it should be very, very regular yarn, then we have to keep the draft on the lower side. So, uh, qualitatively we can say high draft means more irregularity. At the same time, if we go for very low draft, there will be high drafting force due to large mass of fiber. See, sliver contains much more fibers than a yarn is. It's, a yarn is almost 200 times or 300 times thinner than a sliver. A roving is 20 to 30 times thicker than a yarn. That means whatever fibers you have in the yarn cross section, you have 20 times or 30 times more fibers in the roving cross sections. That means there is more mass and when the draft is low, the force is going to be high and that may also lead to irregularity. While discussing the irregularity generating mechanism, we will explain it again that how irregularity is generated, what is the role of draft on irregularity generations. Anyway, for the time being, we just remember this. Now, from there, we move on to the little bit details about the drafting rollers. The top rollers and the bottom rollers. Bottom rollers are made of steel as they are in the case of draw frame also and their surface are not smooth, but fluted. The top rollers are covered by synthetic rubber. Now, why we have done this? Actually, I have explained them in the, the previous course, that is when we are discussing draw frame, but I will repeat it again. Thus, we have to make sure there is enough grip on the fibers, so that the motion from the bottom rollers is transmitted to the fiber. So, to have more frictional grip on the fibers, 
the rollers need to be fluted. So, the purpose of the flute is to actually increase the grip, the grip basically means the friction between the fiber and the roller surface. The top rollers are not fluted, yes, we can also make them made of steel, but we do not, because the top rollers, if I make it made of steel, then there will be too much of noise and the two rollers will be in contact with each other. Both steel rollers, if they run together, a lot of noise will be created. And the second thing is that this, the top rollers, if it is made of synthetic rubber, the synthetic rubber get compressed a bit when force acts on it. And therefore, there will be a larger surface area of contact between the fiber and the roller, because the top rollers will deform a bit at the contact area. And hence, the motion transfer from bottom to the fiber will be better if they are made from the top roller surface is deformable to some extent. To some extent deformable, too much deformation is not also good, but some deformation of the rollers can help us or facilitate the transfer of motion and therefore, we make them you know, little bit made of soft surface, you can say. At the same time, it can avoid a lot of noise. The roller diameters are as shown, bottom rollers typically 28, 25 and 28 millimeters, top rollers is 30 or 32, first one, second one, middle rollers is 25, 27 and the back one is 32, 32, 30 or 32 millimeter. The hardness of the cord synthetic rubber is to the extent of 80 to 85 degree shore. Roller circumference must be greater than the fiber length to avoid roller lapping. So, that way we have to select the diameter. We will see sometimes when you discuss roller lapping in more details that what is the role of roller diameter on roller lapping. If I want to say in a single line, larger diameter rollers means less lapping possibility. The other thing is top rollers can be ground up to 3 mm. See what happens? The top rollers which are covered by synthetic rubber as it runs hours after hours, day after day, there will be some changes in the hardness of the rubber. And because of continuous friction and heat that is generated at the friction points. And there will be some change in the chemical composition of the rubber, especially on the surface part. So, after some time, what we do? We have to grind the top rollers. By grinding, we remove little bit of the material from the surface of the rollers. And below the surface, the still the rubber part which is left is good enough to work for some more days. And this way we can grind the rollers. As we grind, diameter reduces of top lower diameters. And we can go up to reduction of 3 millimeter. That is what. And if we beyond that, we throw the roller. That is basically we remove all the uh, covering part, the synthetic rubber part from the rollers. We call it cot and replace them by new cot again. Apron top roller should not be reground as apron is adjusted to its diameter. This we have to remember that there is no need for the middle rollers to be. Uh, to be ground because the aprons are there on the top of it. So, the roller diameter plus apron thing next gives you the right diameter that is what is required. 
The next thing is aprons and the nose bar. So, let us look at this slide. In the diagram, some aprons are shown here. This is apron, this is also an apron. Aprons act as a conveyor and basically used to transport fibers to the rafting zone. And while transporting them, it makes sure that the fibers move at the speed of the apron only. The aprons are also made from synthetic rubber or leather, not lead, this R is missing here, of 1 millimeter thickness. The top apron extends over the drafting zone and held taut by tensioning device. So, this is the top apron in this diagram and this is the bottom apron. These are the two aprons. The bottom apron runs over a smooth guide bar, which is called nose bar. That is this, if we look at here, this, this part is the nose, this part. The lower part of the bottom apron runs over a tension pulley. If you look at this apron, then this is the lower apron. It moves over a tension pulley. This is the tension pulley. It is a very long apron, moves like this and this top apron is much shorter. So, this is the apron, these are the nose bars and from there, we go to the next slide that is cradle for the top aprons. In the top apron is mounted on a cradle and the cradle is then connected to the top drafting rollers as it is shown here. So, this is the top apron, here is the cradle. The actual cradle di no, diagram was shown in the previous slide. If we go to the previous one, this is the actually the cradle part of it. The whole thing is basically cradle. Okay. So, now if you see it, it here, the extension of the apron within the drafting zone is known as cradle length. See how far the apron is extending within the zone, that is this distance A is called the cradle length. So, cradle length for different fiber lengths are shown in this. Like if I have a cradle length of 40 mm, then we can process fibers for cotton 36 mm and synthetic 33 mm. For cradle length 43, these are the corresponding fiber lengths which can be uh, processed. So, cradle length that means basically it, is, it means that I have to choose a cradle length depending upon the length of the fiber that I am going to process. So, once we decide that this is the typical length of fibers I am going to process, accordingly we will choose the cradle length and that cradle will be fixed on all the drafting rollers of the roving frame. So, once they are fixed, then we have to keep processing fibers close to that particular length and a small change in length of fiber, you may not need to change the cradle length. And then we go to the condenser part on the drafting unit. Now, here the condensers are shown. You look at these condensers. So, drafted fibers tend to spread out as we drop them, as we stretch the fibers, there is a tendency for the fibers to spread out laterally. The spreading tendency means possibilities of generation of fly. Because as the bonds between the fibers are broken, as you know, drop the fibers, whatever mechanical bonding was there between them because of cohesion or because of crimp they are broken by the time I drop them. So, the fibers become little bit free from each other. Now, the moment they become free from each other, there is a tendency for them to spread 
because there is a turbulence of air also as they are moving and hence the spreading tendency is there. So, the spreading tendency leads to fly liberation, unevenness and hence what we need to do? They need to be brought back, but we do not allow them to spread out and for this we have very simple device called condensers. Condensers are very, very simple in terms of their design. They are basically a kind of funnel you can say, the basically type of funnel. So, that there is an entry and there is an exit. Entry, the diameter or we can say the width is more, the exit it has to be narrowed down, that is the only thing. So, how much should be the uh, width at the entry point? That depends upon the hank or count of the sliver. Basically, that depends upon the mass of material there. If the entry point mass is more, I have to go for a larger diameter or larger width. And depending upon the you know, how much condensation we require, we decide the exit width. Only thing that we have to remember while fixing the entry or your width and the exit width that it should not interrupt the flow of fibers. We should not narrow it down to so much that there is a possibility of choking or there is an interruption to the flow of fibers. This we have to avoid at any cost and therefore, the material selection also becomes important. We have to choose a material for manufacturing the condensers which will give minimum friction to the flow of fibers and hence material part, the finish that is given to the material to reduce friction, the size all of them become important. So, there are three condensers, rear condensers, brake draft condensers and main draft condensers. As it is shown here, there is condenser here, here the, at the entry we have sliver, so it is larger. Then the middle zone condenser is here and then there is another condenser here. The rear and back zone condensers have reciprocating motion to spread out the wear of top roller surfaces. This is also important to remember that if we see a machine, you will find that these condensers are mounted on a rail and the rail keeps on traversing back and forth. Why it is traversing? The purpose of traversing is to sp spread out the wear of top roller surface. See top rollers are made of synthetic rubber. So, with time they will wear out, but if the position of the sliver is fixed at a point, then the wear down rate at that particular area of the rubber part of the top roller will be very, very fast. So, if we can spread out a bit, then the wearing out rate will be slowing down uh, or the wearing, wearing out part can be distributed over the entire, no, if not the entire, over the larger surface of the top rollers. And therefore, the condensers mounted on a rail and these rails are always given a traverse movement to and fro by some, so by some mechanism we give this movement. So, that oscillation is important, it is a slow oscillation not very fast and uh, the amplitude depends upon the width of the top rollers. In this case, we are showing a rear condenser here in this diagram. The design is like this, there is the A part and B part you see in this case and this is rectangular type of shape 
and A and B values are shown here. And there are condensers available of different colors, transparent, red, yellow, green. These are basically color marks or color identification marks. So that depending upon the count or the material that we are going to process, we choose a condenser of a right color. Next, we go to spacers. Spacers create space between bottom and top apron. Why do you need to create space? Because we want to adjust the pressure between the aprons. In order to adjust or have some kind of control over the pressure that the two aprons are exerting on each other or basically means on the fibers that we need to adjust. And for this, this spacer is required. The guidance of the fiber depends upon this pressure and spacing between the aprons. So, depending upon the mass flow of fibers between the aprons, see mass flow in a way depends upon the count of roving I am going to process and the count of saliva that I am going to feed. These two will decide if I want a thicker roving, the mass flow will be more, mass flow of fibers between the aprons will be more. So, depending upon the count of roving that I am going to process, the mass of material at any point of time gripped between the aprons will be more or less all depends upon the count of probing I am going to process, I am going to make. So, if the mass is more, pressure needs to be reduced, otherwise too much of drafting force will be generated because ultimately it is the movement of fiber. Front rollers are gripping those fibers which are still partly gripped by the aprons. So, because front rollers runs faster than the aprons, they are going to pull the fibers, but the trailing part of the fibers are still in between the aprons. So, if the aprons grip them too strongly, then there is a chance of drafting force to be so high that the fibers will be simply plucked from the aprons. That is, they are not going to be drafted in a smooth manner, but they are going to be plucked in bunches. We call it drafting, a no drafting situation will occur. So, that we want to avoid and in that case, what we have to do? We have to reduce the pressure between the aprons and the only means to reduce it is by having spacer which just a clip basically which we fixed and adjust the gap between the aprons or pressure between the aprons. The pressure should be moderate, too much of pressure as I written here, extremely high drafting force leading to uneven drafting or plucking of fibers or sometimes it may breakage of fibers, the fibers are too delicate in nature. If we process very fine fibers, then even breakage may also occur. Similarly, if the if it is too less pressure, then there is a problem, problem of inadequate guidance. So, neither too high nor too less pressure, both are detrimental. We have to always decide okay, what is the right pressure we need and that is only done by some trials that we take. Spacing should be adapted to fiber volume, as I said earlier, fiber mass or fiber volume between the aprons. So, sometimes if we switch from cotton to let us say polyester fiber of the same roving count, you know, polyester fibers will be larger in terms of volume because density of polyester is much less. So, for the same mass per unit length, polyester fibers will have a larger volume and therefore, if we do not change the spacer at all and if we keep it what we kept for cotton, 
in that case there is a possibility of undrafting because the volume has increased the pressure will be too high. So, as we go from cotton to polyester, so let us say acrylic, then also we have to adjust the pressure between the upfront with the help of spacers. This is what we have to remember and uh, so that is what the purpose of the spacers. Now come the weighing system or how do we apply pressure on the rollers. So, there will be pressure between the bottom roll and the top rolls. The top rollers and the aprons gets their drive from the bottom rollers, the middle bottom rollers drives the bottom apron first and top rollers. The bottom apron say the motion goes to the top roller as well as the apron of the top rollers, they all because of the frictional contact between them. So, the motion is transferred mechanically from roller to the fibers or from bottom roller to top roller all by friction only. There is no gear in between top and bottom rollers. There is no gear type of transmission between apron to bottom apron to top apron. See so, the motion transfer from bottom roll set of rollers to top is all by friction. Rollers are pressed against each other with what type of force? The force is 100 to 250 Newton that kind of force we have to apply. At the same time, aprons are also pressed against each other. So, we must have a mechanism to apply pressure. So, top roller weighing or weighting mechanism, how do we apply pressure? Now, there are basically there are two ways which are followed in by the machine manufacturers, one with the help of spring, the other is by pneumatic means. So, spring loaded top roller holding assembly is shown here and we can see that with the rollers in position as the lever, see here this lever, the springs are here these are the place where the roller axle is mounted. So, this will be gripped here, here and here, these three positions. This is all meant for holding the top rollers. So, these are the brackets, in the brackets the top roller axle is actually gripped and as we swing this lever the spring gets compressed, these springs will get compressed and thus the pressure will be built up on the bottom rollers. So, the pressure is coming basically by compressing these, these springs. So, the what matters here is the spring constant and the compression of the spring. So, these are the two things which matters. So, depending upon we see there are some adjusting points through which we will be able to change the, the spring, once the springs are there spring constant cannot be changed. See the amount of compression to extend some extent can be regulated through which the pressure can be adjusted. So, what matters here is the basically the spring and these constant spring constants. The other one is pneumatic pressures, top roller brackets holders are mounted on top arm which in turn is connected to the pressure hose which is actually here. Running along the length of the machine, these holes are provided, three holes are provided. When a pin is inserted in any of the hole, it acts as a fulcrum. So, here actually holes are there which is not very clear in the diagram, but we have a mechanism through which 
will be able to adjust the pneumatic loading on the rollers. There is a source of compressed air and that compressed air source is connected to a hose which is running, it is actually here not visible, which is running along the length of the machine and this hose is connected to the brackets and by that the pressure, pneumatic pressure is applied on the top rollers. If I look at this diagram, see both the type of weighing mechanism is active or is practiced. The advantage or disadvantages are there. In the case of pneumatic loading, the control is easy. There is a central control from which we can control the pressure and we can and the pressure remains fairly constant. Whereas, in the case of spring pressures, there is a chance that with time the pins constant changes. So, maybe after one year, two years, the spring constant will change and therefore, the pressure may vary. And the other thing is that we have to adjust the, the pressure in each and every drafting you know, unit when you use the spring as a source of pressure. Whereas, in the case of pneumatic system, there is centralized compressor from which the compressed air is there and through that we can centrally control easily the pressure on the, the spindles very easily, very fast and with very with ease. Now, top roller brackets or holders are mounted on a slider attached to top weighting arm. So, they are actually they can be mounted on a slider and the slider can be moved backward and forward. Why do you need a slider? Because I have to sometimes need to adjust the setting between the rollers. That means, if the rollers are gripped by a bracket, the brackets are, should be able to move backward and forward. So, as to adjust the setting between the rollers. Therefore, they are basically uh, mounted on a slider and they, this is connected to a pressure hose running along the length of the machine as I have already told. Pressure is transmitted from the pressure hose through a cam to the rollers. This is not very clear in this diagram. When a pin is inserted in any hole provided on the pressure hose side unit, it acts as a fulcrum and regulates the pressure. In back or front pair of rollers, another pin position on the bearing slider regulate pressure either on the front or the middle roller. So, there is a pin is here through the pin the there are three holes and depending upon in which hole the pin is there we will be able to adjust the pressure. But more details of this will be available from the, from the manufacturer uh, manuals or if you visit a textile mill, you can actually go and see how the pressure is changed. So, roller pressure arrangement adjustment, only in this case, the set load stage can be read on the pressure adjusting cam in the form of numbers or color markings which are there and uh, through that we will be able to adjust the pressure that is in the case of spring loaded you know, pressure arm. Apart control of apron pressure we have already discussed a bit that for that we basically use spacers and through spacer we basically adjust as I told earlier that this gap which is there between the two aprons and a clip is there, a clip can be inserted and through that the gaps can be made wider or narrower. And these are inserted between the nose bar of a lower apron and the cradle edge of the top apron. Like that it is shown here. This is the diagram for this. Spacers of various sizes are necessary to suit different fiber volume or different count of roving that we want to manufacture. 
about condensers also we discussed a bit earlier typical values of the you know a and b value a is the length and b is the width of the exit window of the the condensers and there are different you know, they are available in different colors indicating different sizes the only thing about the condenser is the main zone condensers actually floats in the drafting field this is what is the main drafting field main drop zone condensers so they float they have no really see the other two condensers in the middle zone or behind the back rollers they are mounted on a rail and the rail oscillates but the main zone condensers is not mounted on any rail they simply float and they are they are not going to oscillate at all the fibers will be passing through this holes which are there and it will make sure that the fibers are not going to spread out. The other important thing is roller overhang. If you look at the drafting system, you will find that the top roller, the front top roller is offset from the front bottom roller and how much is the offset as you see here if we draw a vertical line through the center of the these two rollers then the gap that you see between the two lines is around 6 to 8 millimeter so we say that the overhang is 6 millimeter or 8 millimeter that is what is kept that is the center part of the front top roller will be slightly ahead of the center part of the bottom drafting rollers. This is the overhang. The middle top apron rollers in this case is given 2 millimeter back overhang. This is actually 2 millimeter. So, it is little on the back side from its bottom roller to ensure satisfactory movement of bottom and top aprons. It avoids aprons sticking to each other. The overhang is important. The other important part of the overhang is that it will be from the nip line, the twist flow because the rovings are going to be twisted. So, the twist flow will be able to reach the nip easily if I can reduce the contact between the drafted fleece and the bottom roller, this contact. We will discuss in more details in the case of ring spinning. It is more important there in comparison to roving frame. There it is very, very important because frequency of end breaks is a serious problem in the case of ring spinning. But the basic principle is same, idea of the overhang or if we try to incline the drafting system, the purpose is that the, the drafted fleece that moves out of the nip of the front drafting rollers makes as less contact with the bottom roller surface as possible. That is the basic purpose. For that, the roving or the yarn does not break there because this is the part if the fibers are in contact with the roller surface under some pressure the twist cannot flow there because they will offer resistance to the flow of twist and due to that that part will remain weak and hence susceptible to break or rupture and hence we need this the other thing is the from bottom to top rollers the motion transfer also better if it is little inclined. If you study the mechanics of motion transfer between the rollers, then it will explain that in this case the motion transfer will be little better if it is we have a little overhang. Now, we go to the drafting. 
it is essentially a two zone drafting system consisting of 3 over 3 or 4 over 4 drafting rollers. See, we have a system like this or we have a system like this. There may be 4 pair of rollers or there may be 3 pair of rollers. Both are there, but nowadays mostly uh, 3 pair of rollers are very much in common in most of the cases. If you can manage with 3 pair of rollers, why to go for 4 pair of rollers? You need additional rollers, you need additional now width of the machine is going to increase. The mass of the fiber to be drafted being large, interfiber friction produces large drag between fibers during drafting. This is what you have to remember is in the case of drafting of on a roving frame, the mass of fibers or the volume fibers which are going to handle is quite large, but definitely not as large as it is in the case of draw frame. In compression draw frame it is less, but when it comes to compression to ring frame it is much more. And then here the drafting units are shown, some typical diameters are also given. The diameters may vary uh, from uh, manufacturer to manufacturer. And another thing that you see here is that the distance between the rollers in the back zone can be varied between 60 to 90 mm, in the front zone between 49 to 76 millimeter. Basically it means that depending upon the fiber length that you are going to process, the distance between the nip lines of the rollers are adjustable. So sometimes if you want to process fibers of different lengths, the same drafting unit can be used will be basically move the rollers with respect to each other. And what is normally done? The front rollers cannot move forward. Their position is always fixed. It is the middle roller and the back rollers which will move either backward or forward in order to adjust the gap between the rollers and we call it setting between the rollers. So, drafting unit, there are many more points to discuss. We will take it up in the next lecture. Thank you.